Today we are going to learn about chemical reactions, and if you get to the end, I promise, it will be very satisfying. Products that we all use every day are manufactured in chemical process facilities, typically on the order of 500 gallons to 30,000 gallons per batch. This requires chemical reactions, which often produce heat, non-condensable gas, or both. If the heat is not removed as quickly as it is generated, the batch will increase in temperature, which increases vapor pressure and the speed of the reaction. With increasing temperature, kinetics typically increase exponentially, resulting in a faster rate of pressure generation and what is referred to as a runaway reaction. Such an increase in pressure can result in the rupture of equipment and the loss of containment of the chemicals used in the process. This may not only damage plant property, but potentially result in injury or loss of life, both by the plant staff, but potentially the surrounding community, depending on the chemistry involved and the pressure at which the equipment fails. Understanding the potential for a chemical reaction to generate heat is critical when designing systems to properly control these processes. This is obtained through reaction calorimetry testing. We must also be aware of thermal hazards present when a system or procedural failure, such as loss of cooling or mischarge of reagent, leads to undesired conditions. This knowledge allows us to implement safety systems and procedures to prevent or mitigate the consequences of such scenarios. This may be studied using BSP2, DSC, AR, SST, or ARC. Finally, it is imperative that adequate pressure relieving systems are utilized as a last line of defense to protect against process equipment. This requires low thermal inertia testing and either a VSP2 or ARSST. Wow, that was satisfying. <laughs>